to St Francis Church. In today's service we're going to continue our series looking at hope and this is a hope that is certain we're looking at today. We're also going to be praying, we're going to have some great songs to listen to and join in with, we're going to have some chance to um, remember all that Jesus has done through the sharing of the bread and the wine as we think about the cross and resurrection and then right towards the end of the service we're going to be ha sharing some news and some prayer updates. So I hope you really enjoy this service and as I was praying and preparing for this service I had a real sense of God's presence and his power, his excitement to meet with each of us. And we can meet with God really even through a screen as we prepare our hearts. And so this is the most important part of the service now so that we don't just watch a service but so that we fully engage. Let's pray. Lord, right now, right at the start of the service, we want to give to you the things that are worrying us. We want to give to you our feelings of inadequacy. And we want to receive from you your love, your peace, And we want to meet with you. And some of you already may be feeling, well, God doesn't want to meet with me. Well, the truth is he does. If you open your heart to him, he will meet with you even this day. Some of you may be feeling, but I'm not good enough. No, you're not, and I'm not either. But God is happy to meet with anyone who opens their mind and heart to him. So Lord, open our minds, open our hearts and help us to meet with you today. And let's pray this prayer that's going to come up on the screen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's worship God. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil a wide way made. Come set our hearts again.
wonder if you've had any bad days this week. Maybe you haven't got on with your schoolwork as well as you wanted to and by the end of the day you felt really annoyed with yourself. Or maybe there's jobs at home that you just didn't get on with or projects at work that you just kept putting off and you got to the end of the day or the end of the week and you just felt really, really annoyed and felt a bit like a failure. Maybe you forgot to do something that you knew you should have done and you've let people down. Again, you can feel so guilty about that. Or perhaps you've got really annoyed with something, annoyed with some equipment or annoyed with some people. You just lost patience and weren't as kind and gentle as you should have been. The feeling of guilt and shame, it can be really hard to live with. We need to do something to, to deal with that. Or maybe you're someone that's just been getting on with life this week. You've just gone from one thing to the next to the next and you may have done many of these things I've just mentioned, but haven't even noticed because you've been so focused and so busy. Well, whether you're very aware of your failures or whether you're not, we all need to come to God with um, our stuff so that we can get it off our chest and so that we can change and be changed by God so that we can become the people that he calls us to be. And in this season of Lent, we're very much looking at extended times of doing that so that the transformation that happens within us can be accelerated. So before we say our confession together, let's have some time alone to bring to God the things that we regret. Lord, would you show us the things that we need to confess? And give us the confidence that we really can change when we invite you in. Let's now say the words that will appear on the screen. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all of our days. Amen. So we are part way through our season of Lent and the things that you've been observing, maybe the things you've been giving up or the things you've been taking up, maybe you failed already. Well, don't give up. There's a chance for a fresh start even now. And it's a chance for fresh help from God. Just ask him for what you need. And it's meant to be hard. It's meant to be a challenge because it reflects the challenge that Jesus faced when he was in the desert, being tested and tempted by the devil and also going without food for all of that time. God can help us to do these things so that transformation can happen. And now the prayer in the Church of England and the Anglican Communion for this day. Almighty God, by the power and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
When God made a promise to Abraham, because he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Human beings, of course, swear by someone greater than themselves, and an oath given as confirmation puts an end to all disputes. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he granted it by an oath, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The last time we filmed an online service outside, there was snow everywhere. But we've had a couple of weeks of slightly warmer weather. There's been lots of snowdrops and crocuses about the place. And it, we get, really get this feeling that spring is on its way, uh, particularly when you get a really warm day. But in the back of our mind, even though we know spring always comes, sometimes it gets delayed. Sometimes there's another icy blast. The warmer weather and the flowers gives us more hope, but we've got this nagging thing in the back of our mind. Maybe there'll be another cold patch. On Monday, when we had the coronavirus press conference and Boris Johnson unveiled the roadmap to uh, June the 21st, where there's very limited or no restrictions at all, it gave us lots of hope. We could see how things could progress thanks to the vaccination program and thanks to careful measures, we hope. But again, even though we're filled with more hope, there is this nagging doubt at the back of our mind. What if one of the times of unlocking leads to a real spike in cases? What if there's a new variant that comes out that puts all the plans um, on hold and we have to wait in lockdown for longer. We have more hope but we still have a nagging doubt in the back of our mind and sometimes we can be like that with faith. Uh, our faith we believe that we get forgiveness, we, get belie we believe that we have eternal life, that we get adopted into God's family as his children but some of us have this nagging doubt. What if I'm not actually forgiven? What if I don't actually get to heaven? What if heaven's not real? And these nagging doubts are natural and many of us have them, sometimes or lots of the time. But the writer to the Hebrews, whose passage we're going to be um, exploring today, encourages us to eliminate those doubts because when we have faith in God, it's faith that is sure and certain. So even on our brightest of days, doubts and fears can cast a shadow over these days and, and spoil them. And as Christians, we need to work out a way of dealing with these doubts and believing in the promises of God and to know that they are sure and, and certain. And the people that the writer to the Hebrews is writing to also faced doubts, they also faced fears, and they also faced lots of pressure and he's writing to them because he wants them to know that the faith that they have is secure and it's worth holding on to. Many of the Jewish Christians he writes to had faced great pressure and persecution and some of them already had thrown away their faith. They thought this persecution and this pressure and these hard times are not worth it and he wants to convince them it is worth it. Keep holding on to Jesus and you have a sure and certain hope. When people want to be sure that they're telling the truth, they may say things like, pinky promise, or they may sing, say like, I swear on my mother's life in courts to be sure that you're telling the truth they they say well swear on the bible in biblical times they didn't swear on the bible but they would say things like i swear by the temple or i swear by um the treasure in the temple they would swear on something that was greater than themselves and 
the writer to the Hebrews, in talking about the sure and certain nature of God's promises, talks about the promise that he gave to Abraham, the promise that his descendants would be blessed. Abraham had gone through um, a really challenging trial, and at the end of the trial, um, God makes this promise again to him. And he doesn't swear on anything but himself, because there is no one greater than himself to swear by. And the writer to the Hebrews says, so that's a sure and certain promise because God has sworn by himself. He also talks about how it's impossible for God to be proved false. There are a number of sections in the Bible that talk about that, that God cannot lie. God always fulfills his promises. So he's sworn by himself. He will always tell the truth and God always keeps his promises. So the writer wants to reassure these Christians that he's writing to that the promises that they have in Jesus are sure and they are certain. The Jewish Christians needed to know that despite the persecutions that they were facing, it was worth still holding on to the promises of God. They were going to hold them. They were going to keep them. Peter Scazzaro, in his book Emotionally Healthy Christianity, talks about farmers in Canada and the challenges that they were having going out and doing their jobs in the middle of a blizzard. Jobs still needed to be done. And what was happening was the blizzards were so severe that they literally couldn't see their hand in front of their face. So much snow was coming. And sadly, some farmers perished, not able to find their way back home when they'd gone to do a job. And so the way they tried to overcome this problem was to attach a rope to the farmhouse door that they would hold on to as they went to do their jobs. And as long as they kept holding on to the rope, it meant that no matter how much it was snowing, no matter how limited the visibility was, they could just work their way along the rope and find their way home. And very much that's an illustration of what it's like holding on to the promises of God. No matter how hard the situation that we're facing, if we keep holding on to the rope of the promises of God, we will have what we need and we will make it home. Some of us struggle with anxiety. We're facing a situation and it makes us really fearful. So we need to hold on to the promise with both hands that God says, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. And God will give us the peace that we need in this anxious inducing situation. Some of us may be struggling with, with the, the work that we're doing and we're finding ourselves getting exhausted. So we need to hold on to the promise that says in Isaiah 40 that, that he will give us strength and we'll rise up like, on wings like eagles if we trust in him. Some of us may be struggling with this idea that we've really messed up so badly that we're not going to be forgiven. And we need to hold on to the promise in 1 John that says that he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins if we confess them. And some of us may be struggling with the idea of, well, will I actually get eternal life? Is it sure for me? Maybe for others, but not for me. So we need to hold on to the promise of John 3.16 that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever, including me and including you, whoever believes and trusts in him will have eternal life. These promises are sure and certain and we can hold on to them. We need to hold on to them with two hands and we need to actually remember them and keep reminding ourselves of the promises whenever we face a situation that gives us doubts. Holding on to the promises can defeat doubts. The writer to the Hebrews uses another analogy for the promises of God and how they hold us secure. He talks about them being like an anchor for the soul. When I was a teenager, I was part of Sea Scouts and our group had a, a fishing trawler that was converted and we used to go on these little trips and it was lots of fun. And one time we would stop off at this island, you 
usually as a treat towards the end of our trip and they would put the anchor down to hold the boat in place and then we'd go off on small rowing boats to the island and then come back. But without the anchor in place, when we'd come back on the boats, on the small rowing boats, we'd find our trawler wasn't there anymore. The anchor was needed to hold the trawler in place and the anchor of our faith in Jesus is needed to hold us in place. The anchor will hold us in a storm and the anchor will stop us drifting when the culture, the currents of culture try to, to sweep us in all kinds of directions that are not always helpful. The anchor of God's promises holds us. The, the Hebrew Christians needed that anchor to keep them going and to hold secure when they were facing persecution. And we need it whenever we're going through difficult times, but we also need it in easier times. The promises of God help us to stay on track. The passage finishes with reference to the temple. At the time of Jesus, people believed that the place and the whole world where God's presence was most manifest was the temple. And within the temple, the place, the real center of God's presence was the most holy place or the holy of holies that you'd have to go through a curtain to get there. And even then, only one person each year was able to go through the, the high priest who had to do all sorts of elaborate sacrifices to prepare themselves to go to that place. And the writer says that hope has entered that place. Hope has gone through the curtain into that place. And then he talks about how Jesus is our high priest. He is the one who has entered that place for us, entered into the, into the center of everything, and he's done it for us. And our hope in him enables us also to enter into the very presence of God. We can know God's presence close to us and even within us. In other places of the New Testament, it talks about the believer being like a temple of the Holy Spirit, a dwelling place of God. God can be in us. God can be with us. This hope is a secure hope that's secure because it's based on Jesus and based on what Jesus has achieved through his life, through his death, through his resurrection. And this is a hope that is worth holding on to. It's a hope that helps us with our present life and it's a hope that helps us with our future. So because of Jesus, our High Priest, we can enter into the Father's presence. We can hold on tight to the promises of God, which is an anchor for our soul that will hold us safe in whatever storms we face. So why don't we come into his presence now in prayer? Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can enter boldly into your presence because of the promises that we're holding on to, that we are your children, that we are loved by you, and that we are welcome because of all that Jesus has done for us. So would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Maybe there's an area of your life that you know that you're just racked with doubts about. Ask God for the reassurance and the promise that you need. Maybe you're going through a storm right now. He is the one who can hold you secure in the storm. He holds you, but you also need to seek to hold on to him. Lord, would you strengthen us? Would you fill us with your love? Fill us with your peace and help us to be people that are secure in you. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Let's now declare our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come to the part of the service where we give thanks for all that Jesus has done for us. Some of you may like to take some bread and take some wine at home. You know it can't be consecrated, but you can still remember Jesus. And others of you I know will be happy just to hear the words and give thanks. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets 
to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice for our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth, the feast with Francis and all your saints, at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So take some time to thank Jesus for all that he's done. Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say to you, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. 
send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. There's a few pieces of news and prayer updates. Firstly, news about our Alpha course. There are 12 of us doing the course in two small groups of six and it's going really well so thank you for praying for it. Alpha I think is the best course I've done for uh, people coming to faith as well as for people nurturing and strengthening their faith. It's full of so many inspiring stories about God at work in people's lives. It also um, explains things the best I've ever come across. So if you 
have never tried Alpha, why don't you contact us and, and sign up for our next course, which may be uh, in the summer or maybe in September, depending on interest. On Wednesday, um, Alistair and his family delivered the last set of food parcels for our local schools where there's some families that are really struggling economically and we've been giving them food parcels for the last three months and Wednesday was the last lot so I want to give thanks for Alistair and his family, give thanks for his work, Adair that gave him a day release to do this work and also to give thanks to all of you for your donations and for the council and other funders that have given us some money towards this project. If you come across any other local needs that you think, oh, it would be good to do something about that, do get in touch because we want to be a church that keeps reaching out to our community, meeting needs in practical ways. Last week and this coming week, we are interviewing for a new architect for our building. Every church has to have an architect to look at the building generally in terms of the state of repair, but it's also good to have an architect to help us to develop things and, and we're seeking to do both. There are things that need repairing, but there are also things that we want to develop in this, this church building and it's great to talk to different architects and to get their insights and their views and looking at the potential of this building so that it becomes a wonderful worshipping space for us, a wonderful place for us to do ministry and mission and a wonderful blessing for our community. So do pray for us that we choose the right architect and pray for us that we get a really clear vision for what God wants for our building for the next phase of its life. And finally, I know many of you will be looking forward to Stella, our new curate, arriving in the summer. She's coming in June and actually she starts work the week after. According to Boris's roadmap, everything opens up. So if all goes well, it'll be perfect timing. But please pray for Stella as she prepares herself and finishes off her college work. And also, please pray for housing. We're looking to rent a house in our parish locally and we need a, a rental property that will accept cats, accept Stella's pets. So if you could pray for that, that we find the right place at the right time, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Now let's receive the blessing from God so that we can hold on to the hope that God gives us in Jesus, that is an anchor for our soul. So may the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.